Hello, my name is Cecilia Donnell. I'm a member of the Greater Byway Temple of Albion. We're located at 402 Austin Avenue, Michigan, Albion, Michigan. Zip code is 49224. Our pastor is Kevin Williams Jr. Please join us on our website, which is gbwtalbion.org and see what a wonderful job we're doing right now here in this community. Please join us and thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord, we give you the name of Jesus Christ here at the Shepherd's Place, in the Byway Temple of Albion. We are starting a new series on tonight. Our new series will be entitled Spiritual. We have to simply change our point of view at this time as we have been attacked. Um, we have been attacked by the devil himself the ministry, the church, we have been attacked. So we have to change our point of view if we simply don't have the right mindset. So tonight we're kicking off a new series. I don't know how many parts it will have, but this is entitled Spiritual. And we have a few scriptures in the New Testament that we would like to share with you. Hopefully you're having a blessed evening on this hot, sunny spring day. We thank God for it. Feel free to share this with your family and friends on social media that we can get the word of God out. Thank God what he's doing in our life in this part of the vineyard. Let's jump into our scriptures. We have nine passages of scripture we're gonna to try to get through rather um, quickly here on tonight. First scripture, St. John chapter 4, verse number 24. The gospel according to St. John chapter 4, verse 24, and it's in red. So who said it? Jesus. Jesus. It reads, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As Christians, Christ-like, we have to understand who we worship is not of a physical being. the gift of the Holy Ghost is essential in a walk with God. Not only does it give you another communication mechanism, but it allows a spirit to obtain you inside of you. The right spirit. So if we're receiving counseling, if we're receiving instruction, if we're receiving guidance, and we are Christian saved saints, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, it will not work for our daily life if they cannot give you scripture, in other words, to defend their instruction, their guidance of what to do, the objectives to achieve in helping you, then it's simply not confirmed. We need confirmation and the time is now. There's so much false information going across the media whether it's social or our television sets. And if it's not false, it's opinionated. And you better bet your last 
Read Penny. The opinionated point of view does not line up with the scriptures, which means it's not spiritual. Let's go to the book of Romans. Two scriptures we're interested in the book of Romans. On tonight, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Bible reads, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Our spirit, this is why we need to try to function as most as possible in the spirit, can see things that the flesh cannot see. So we can see these chairs, we can see this building, these lights, the sanctuary, the carpet, the walls, the balcony. We can see these things from our eye. But the spirit can see that accident that is going to occur within the next two weeks of your life. So when you begin to go into prayer, intercessory prayer, when you are intercessory on the behalf of yourself, on the behalf of a loved one that may be coming through some tough trials and tribulations, you speak it in tongues where the devil cannot translate it, right? It's a heavenly tongue. The devil was kicked out of heaven. Therefore, he does not have the ability to what? To translate a heavenly tongue because he's no longer a citizen of heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? Therefore, this is a tool of communication and of power that God has equipped the same with. So instead of worrying about little Nas X and the 666 pairs of red and black earmax Nikes that he sold in the video giving the devil a lap dance, laughing and cracking jokes while he's simply inviting all of our children to go to hell with him unless he repents before it's too late. We should have the spiritual mindset why is this vision available? So when we were growing up, it was not available. What is going on? We should not see it from a flesh standpoint when we are considered ourselves Christians. Or are we Christians? I had the pleasure to look at the Ohio district, diocese, and correct me if I'm wrong, First Lady, I believe the title of one of their seminars or their council gathering virtually is Will the Saints Come Back to Church? Will they? Because every saint has been in Walmart since the pandemic started. Every saint has been to the gas station. There's a difference from being obedient to God's word and, and also using wisdom. You can follow God's word and use wisdom. We do it here. We have the same rules as the places that the saints that refuse to go to church but go everywhere else, including vacations. Help me, Holy Ghost. We prefer, we ask you kindly to wear a mask, not for us, for you. We have sanitation, which is hand sanitizer throughout the church. And we have CDC guidelines and listings posted in bathrooms and throughout the church. And we practice social distancing. That you still can come to God's house and worship him in spirit. Let's go to Romans chapter 15 verse 13.
The Bible reads in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the what? The or other words, the holy what? Start with S. Spirit. The Holy Spirit. When we use the word hope, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how you can turn hope on for the Christian or the saint? The Holy Spirit. They just Paul just told them, the church in Rome that we serve the God of hope. So I hope this happens. I hope I get a raise. I hope I get a financial blessing. I hope I find a spouse. I hope I get a house. I hope I can find peace. I hope God can fill me with joy. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. The very fact that you have the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues gives you the ability to turn on what? Hope. But that's through the spiritual. And it's very important that we know this because a lot of church going folks because the Bible says those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But a lot of saints put a lot of trust in man of this world with secular agendas. So I said, I hope the government look out for a brother. I hope these politicians help us. Right there, your view is flesh and of the world. Paul was clear. We serve the God of what? Of hope. Why are you going outside of that? Anything you need is right there. But now, as we mature in my sixth year, let's, with our prayers, Let's start being intentional. Pastor, what are you saying? Be specific. And when it's to the team and what you want. I want a man. I need a man to cut my grass, shut my thumb, take out the trash. And you get a man that will cut your grass, shovel your snow, and take out the trash. And also beat you upside your head. And also cheat on you. And also he doesn't have a job. And also he stays home and plays video games all day. Be specific and intentional in your prayer requests. You only get what you ask for. Let's church say amen. amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. We're opening up a new series and we're dealing with spiritual. Let's be spiritual in this new year, 2021, coming out of the pandemic. Be spiritual. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the Bible reads, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the what? The Holy Ghost, which is in who? In you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your what? Your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This body does not belong to you. So I know ain't no saints drinking no Hennessy and Sirach, so let me lower the standards. When you on your sixth mountain dew and you type two diabetic for the day, and you on your tenth Snickers, and your sugar is in a three thousand. Why are you abusing God's body? Because it's not yours. We have to use wisdom. God didn't say because it's the pandemic. Stop! Don't don't praise me. Don't come to my house. Amen. We have to see things from a spiritual point of view. God, what would you have me do? And follow it. And 
and make sure it lines up with the scriptures. Which a lot of what I'm seeing on social media from the saints has nothing to do with the word of God. Absolutely, positively nothing. And I see we going everywhere but God's house. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Please feel free if you want to donate or give an offer. You can do so through the cash app, which is posted. We appreciate it. Especially in this time, we're looking to pay off our church. We have a telethon coming up next week, also this Saturday, around 1 p.m. I will, yours surely will be in the interview. I will be interviewed by my younger brother as I prepare to turn 40 years old. And my wife was saying, I'm an old man. And I'm saying in my head that when you get married, two flesh become one. So if I'm turning 40, she's turning. She's turning 40 with me too. <laughs> yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible reads, Now the Lord is that spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So if there is bondage, if there is captivity, if there is slavery, that is not the spirit of the Lord. This is why the church should move in that spirit. This is what Paul is saying in his second installation of writing to the churches in Corinth. He's saying now, the Lord is that spirit. What spirit is he talking about? The spirit of freedom. This, if you want to call it a religion, I call it a relationship. We don't put guns to people's heads and say, come to church. You have the choice. But for those that know better, need to act better before it's too late. I don't know what more can God do to wake you up than what has one for. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25, the Bible reads that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. If these characteristics don't describe you, you are not functioning and walking in the what? Starts with an S. In the spirit. These are the fruits of the spirit. The Bible says a tree is known by the fruit it bears. So if a tree begets pears, what kind of tree is it? A pear tree. If a tree begets oranges, what kind of tree is it? An orange tree. If a tree begets apples, what kind of tree is it? It's an apple tree. Now, if a tree begets a nasty, ugly, stinky attitude, what kind of tree is it? Verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lust. This is referring to the late night phone calls I'll be getting in text. Hello. If we live in the spirit, let us what? Also walk in what? Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. We got to practice that. See, the devil knows when people ain't in the spirit. How does he know? When that car pulls in front of you and you fling him off, you ain't in the spirit. The devil says, okay, I, I got some out of her. I got some out of him. Let me do that again. We have to show the devil because the devil cannot read your mind that his tricks, his games, his methods will not get us off our wicked Even if our brain, we stress, we upset, we frustrate,
frustrated, go show it. Because once you show it, that will say, mm -hmm, I got him. Mm -hmm, I got him. That's how the devil operates. So as bad as the things that I went through in my life get, I just try to shrug it off. As best as I can, I, I've learned that. There's only certain things the devil can attack anyway, and he has to have the permission of God to do it. We learn that with the story of Job. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 16, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Only a few more scriptures, and we're going to prepare to close out as we're dealing with our new series. We started tonight with spiritual. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible reads that he would grant you, who is he? God. According to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his what? His spirit in the inner man. Now sometimes we see these bodybuilders and they got muscles on top of muscles, and sometimes we see these little skinny folks. They ain't got no muscle, right? Don't look like they can lift a chair or roll up some paper towel. But that's not the strength that Paul is referring to in directing this communication to the church in Ephesus. He's referring to the strength of the inner man, which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, that gives us power. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, ye shall receive power after, not before, but after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. So this spirit, or in other words, uh, when Paul called it, that spirit <laughs> does not come on you naturally. Right? This is why the Bible says everybody was born of sin. This is why Mary had to be born of a virgin, impregnated by what? You guessed it, the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. Can God dwell in your heart without faith? No. He can't. So that very blessing that's right there staring you smack dab in your face. You can smell the blessing. I don't, I don't know how old that people are watching virtual, but I remember when you come home and your mother was cooking, you can smell that blessing. Huh? You can smell that blessing. And depending on what she's cooking, you can smell it coming down the street. You can even do it now with somebody barbecuing. You can, somebody don't know how to cook ribs. Huh? You can smell it. Now imagine, now that's flesh. Ain't no power in flesh. Right? Imagine if we tune in that same spirit. Oh, I see that demon down the street. I ain't going around that street. If we can just tune in spiritually and see what it is. It is not of God, so therefore it should not be of us. The scripture goes on to say that ye be rooted and grounded in love. You cannot have the spirit of God and you do not display or show the spirit of love. Some of us have a lot of work to do in that, including myself. These Bible studies, these teachings, these Christian educations that I teach, these sermons that I preach, first is directed for me. To our congregation, our church, and our viewers. For the ministry to be elevated in such of a way, it has to reflect the pastor. If the pastor is not willing to abide by his teachings or his preachings, it won't work. So I can't tell you to stay out the liquor store and I'm in there, give me a fifth of Sharon, the peach flavor. It's not going to work. I can't tell you stop playing lotto and I'm in line playing my mega millions of power. Say, come on now, let me get this mega church. Huh? It 
won't work. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible reads, For God has not given us the spirit of what? Of fear. So any fear, any fear, right? That doesn't come from God. Any fear. According to the, to the writings of Bishop Timothy, a young bishop, and the son of the gospel to the apostle Paul. So we should know as soon as we see hate. Why is the news trying to make us so afraid? How many good things come across the news channel? I'll, I'll wait. Now your local news, you will get the county fair for 15 seconds. You will get a chili cook-off for five or six. And then little Tommy met a celebrity at Disney World for about another 30 seconds. That's all you're going to get. Other than that is who got killed, who got robbed, how many people dying of the coronavirus, what is Trump doing wrong, what is Biden doing wrong, this police to kill this person, right? It's fear mongering. It's designed to make you afraid. But according to the scripture we just read, but God has not given us what? The spirit of what? Of fear. Now Paul once again said that spirit, the spirit of fear ain't, ain't God's spirit. But of power and of love, they're going to love again, and of a sound mind. Nobody say you, you don't have to wear a mask. You, you, um, you don't have to wear a mask. Coming into church. Nobody said you gotta sit on top of somebody coming into church. Right? Sound mind is wisdom. We have to use wisdom in everything. In everything we do. So I'm trying to encourage somebody. Because some people are gonna get left behind, believe it or not. I'm not attacking you. I'm trying to help you. Because if you don't start seeing things spiritually, the devil will keep winning those battles against you. And we don't want that. Let the church say amen. amen. Last scripture. I John the first John chapter 4 verse 13. The Bible reads in I, John, or 1 John, chapter 4, verse 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us what? His spirit. That's checkmate, y'all. He has given us his spirit. Christian means you're Christ-like. When if the word Christian was established, after Jesus died on the cross or not. The definition means Christ-like. So the way that we carry ourselves should reflect who? Christ. Because he gave us a spirit. And then and, and we just read that the spirit is in us and our spirit is in who? In him. So when you start smoking that marijuana, you're quenching the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Because your spirit is also in him. But that's deep. That's that lobster, caviar, steak, shrimp, swordfish. Y'all are quiet on tonight. That's that heavy artillery that one day maybe we get there, but for now, we Gerber food. Mashed up potatoes, baby carrots. That's what we're eating tonight with some formula milk. Let the church say amen. So hopefully these scriptures we went on today dealing with spiritual have helped you and been a blessing to you. We love you and God bless you in Jesus.